Friday by David Shapiro, the um, Global Chief Strategist for mm -hmm. Search and Wealth. Thanks so much, David, for joining us and joining me. I've got a couple of questions today. Interestingly enough, when I was thinking about this interview, I thought, well, you know, I think a lot of the times you speak about investments and all mm -hmm. and the like. But today I'd like to go maybe a different track. Okay. I, I think I'm a young um, guy coming into a business, looking to build the business, and building business is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you've got massive experience in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you, you know, I'd love to learn that or some of those experiences. Difficult to unpack in this chat today, but, you know, I'd really like to maybe go down that road. Mm -hmm. And a big challenge for me is how do we bring the younger portfolio managers up? You know, are they coming to the market? Are they there? You know, where's the next David Shapiro coming from? They're there. <laughs> the one thing they're there. What I find with younger people and where what we have to focus on is actually making them stay the course. They get very, um, you find that younger people today, maybe because of the age in which they live, uh, the fact that so much information is available to them at the touch of a button, whether it's internet, whether it's through podcasts, webinars, whatever it is, um, they're very impatient and they don't want to do the miles. You know, uh, as a marathon runner, there's no shortcut to running a marathon. And in fact, if you want to run a marathon, you don't run a marathon as your first race. You start with the 10s and you overcome the 10Ks and then the 20s. And then finally, when you've got the miles or the Ks in your legs, you go do the marathon. And, and, and that's what I find about a lot of youngsters as well. They want the money. They want the, uh, the clients. They want everything without actually doing the training. And that takes time. That's, there is, there's no shortcut uh, for experience and there's no shortcut to get to that route. And you find that after two or three years, they start to get edgy and they want something bigger or better. It takes a long time. You know, with any marathon, I guess mm. the worst part is the 27K to the 40K. Mm. You know, you kind of done the hard part, but you're going through this, this man, no man's land. So if you were to rotate that into investing, I think that's where we lose a lot of portfolio yes. managers. They're just about to make it, but they know they've got that hard slog, mm. new family, need more money you know all these things mm. more lively I, pressures yeah how do we get them through that stage? there's there's a there's an important point um particularly our business in fact it, it it applies to all businesses when a client comes to see you you have to build the connection the trust in other words it's not about spreadsheets <laughs> it's not about how clever you are and what you downloaded off the internet. You know, the fancy slides that, that show you all the different kinds of permutations about which are the biggest tech companies on. It's not that at all. It's, a, it's making the connection with your client. In other words, understanding why the client has come to see you. And the one, the one rule we've always had is, is financial services or our business should be bought, not sold. I, I okay. couldn't agree with you more. In other words, yeah. when they come to you, when they come in to you, you don't have to make promises to them. They've actually knocked on your door. Why? Because of either they've heard about you from someone else or because of your reputation uh, in the market, you know, your reputation in the market or some other reason. They might have heard you on radio, seen you on TV. When you go out and knock on their door, you make them promises. And it's very difficult in this kind of game to actually live up to those promises because you're living up to the promises, you're doing well, and then you get a COVID or you get some kind of incident. So that's the one thing is that your reputation must be, must be bought. Once they're in there and they're there with you to make that connection. And you've got to understand, you know, that's, that's something that takes years and years, the conversation to understand. And I always bring younger people that are with me, that work for me, into those meetings. And I can see them getting bored and they're getting irritable because uh, they don't want to go through the geography. How are you? Where were you? I knew your auntie. I knew your granny. You know, those kind of things which help you understand the client. They want to get straight to the spreadsheets. You know, this is what we're recommending. This is our brokerage. This is our fees and everything like that. And I think it's, it's, it's that that you have to teach them. And the only way you teach them is to actually mentor. But I think that's a valid point. And when, when I have these discussions with the younger PMs, this concept of being a salesman has almost become almost a dirty word these days. You know, you, 
And I'm not talking about knocking on doors, selling Hoovers. I'm talking about being out there, selling yourself, building your brand. The, the idea of being called a salesman now is it's almost frowned upon. But the opposite has then transpired is that, well, I don't want to be a salesman, so I'm going to go and do every single degree or no. certificate that I can <laughs> to prove that I'm intellectually very smart and therefore you will buy from me. Why would you You've become that totally boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the more complicated the chart, yeah. the more complicated the spreadsheet, you can't. You know, that's why I always laugh when I hear people giving you earnings forecast to the fourth decimal point. You know, so. I'll show they did the research. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why, why the fourth decimal point? You know, it's you can do it in, in. Have you ever, you know, when your kids are at uh, kindergarten, they rate you on like a one, two, three, or four, whatever it is. You know, four is good, and, yeah. and that's all you have to do is rate companies on one, twos, threes, and fours. You don't have to do it to those kind. It's either a good company or it's not, or it's or or, or it's it's um you know it's a bad company so i think i think that's that's where you know people kind of miss the point about everything so there's two two levels here i think that certificates and the spreadsheets are trying to build trust mm. but no uh authentic you're not authentic you know i don't know if you come across as authentic and in money management i would say that's probably it's yes. in line with trust you have to be authentic do you think though that's what's killing that side and that's what's making yes. it difficult for the younger guys to build their books? You've got to know the spreadsheets. Yeah, and you've got to know yeah. the detail. Yes. So you take that for granted. Yeah. But you don't have to brag about it. You don't have to flaunt it. You don't have to use fancy words. The simpler your language and the simpler the uh, concept, the easier it is for people to understand. So you've got to... Don't, don't, you've got to talk to people as though you're talking to your younger brother, younger sister, uh, your granny, or someone like that who has no idea about anything in financial markets. So you've got to be able to explain it in those very simple terms. You know, the more pompous you are, the less likely you are to get the client. You know, they'll, they'll be polite and they'll nod and thank you very much, but you won't see them again. I'd like to unpack that a bit, uh, particularly the, what the client wants are um, <coughs> in light of COVID. So I was looking last night through some research out there in terms of what people feel is going to happen now that post COVID, and no one knows, I get that, so it's more of your opinion, but there was this research paper that came out around a thousand corporates that were um, interviewed as to what next. So the, 90, the one thing in stat that came out here was 90% of the workforce will never want to work in an office again. Mm. Okay. I, I get that. But now you'd start going down the path of not having a head office, not having a brand. Mm -hmm. And in this, ga in, this, in this industry that we, we are building and we, we're growing, what part of having a brand and a head office is important with building client trust, authenticity? Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't have someone come over to your house. No. They want to see, how important is it? I think those 90% as the years go by will become 80%, 70%, 60% and so on. You need that brand. You need an address. And also, particularly in our industry, we need to communicate. Um, there often, I, I'm sitting at home, and I'm, we are busier than we've ever been. I have never been so busy. And to be honest, I'm, never getting, I'm getting through much more work than I have ever done. But it's boring. You know what I mean? You, yeah. I wake up in the morning and uh, don't have to get in my car, so I don't have a chance to listen to any music or anything. I'm there at my desk and I go. Yeah. You know, even at lunchtime, I don't stop. I go, sit down. I've seen my wife the whole day, so I have a quick sandwich, get up back to where, where we are. And at the end of the day, I turn off my computer and I say, and now what? And, and I think those breaks, getting in your car, getting to work, yes, I know about commuting, uh, having lunch, having that lunch break, walking around wherever you are, and also turning off your computer, getting into the car and going out. Uh, by the time supper comes now, I also haven't got anything else to say to my wife because <laughs> we've been saying it the whole day. You yeah. know? So I, I think that's very important that you've got. And also you need the brand. You need to belong to something. From our point of view, yes, we need, at least need a few days in the office where something crops up. You want to cross, you, know, you want to say, yeah. hold on, I saw this movement in Richmond. What does it mean? I can't go email Hi, Alec, blah, 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 you know, and wait for him because he might not answer. Whereas 
in an office, you go into the office, you see three or four people, someone will come up with an answer, or alternatively, you'll spark something that gets you that answer. So I, from our point of view, I think it's absolutely necessary that we get back to work and we, start, you know, we have some form of communication, uh, maybe not five days a week, but certainly over a time. And clients want That's to bad. walk in. They want uh, to I come into the office. Yeah. I had a meeting today at Motherland in Benmore Gardens, and we sat there with the masks on, you know, and people are walking past all the time. It just didn't feel right, you yeah. know. It just, it just never had the same kind of feeling as we have sitting in a corporate uh, climate or atmosphere. You bring up this concept of we're not communicating anymore verbally. I mm -hmm. think we are uh, maybe over communicating, and there's a shift in being a good verbal communicator to yeah. being a good now having to become a good written communicator, mm -hmm. and I. I don't, a lot of people are either great verbal or great written. Very, very, it's not that you are both good at both. Um, are you seeing that with now engaging with your clients, having to shift the way you, you engage with them? Are you having to do stuff more written? Are you, you know, how, has it changed anything in the way you, you deal with your clients? We're actually dealing more verbally. Okay. Written, people don't read. <laughs> yeah. Get that into your mind. Unless 175 they read characters exactly. in a Twitter. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Understand that. Yeah, you know what we do is if you produce a thirty-page booklet or something or a fifty-page, no one's going to read that. Yeah, you know you've done a great piece of work, but you've got to condense that to a soundbite for people to understand. Yeah, you know, and that's that's a problem. The the amount of information that is coming through that we are seeing, and we're lucky we have a close association with UBS, and what always attracts me when we talk to the CIOs, the chief investment officers, is that they put it, they give us these um, seminars or, you know, we, we have these communications yeah. where everything's done in 20 minutes in the simplest of language. Yeah. And we go away and we expand that. Is you that know? verbal or written? Verbal. And it's, okay. it's, it's not even a video, it's, it's by phone. Yeah. But they, they, they're they able to pack their message into a quick... Twin, you know, we, we often use Paul Donovan, who's uh, the chief global... Uh, what's he? The, you know, he's the head of uh, chief um, economist. Sorry, yes, I got right. that. Yes, I yes. got that. <laughs> at at uh, UBS. He stands up without a note. And just talks. Just talks. Yeah. And, and you listen to those stories and you remember those stories. If he had to put up slides or charts... You know, with, by the time you're looking for one figure that he's talking about, he's on to the next one. You've yeah. missed. Eventually, like, thank you. Done. Too much information. Too much information. Yeah. That. So and he comes across very authentic. Eh? Very. That's and he's important. thought about his stories. Yes. Yeah. And he's colorful in the stories. Sometimes too colorful that got him into trouble. But I mean, that's beside the point. But, um, but you know, the, this is what, I, when you chat to these younger PMs, mm -hmm. the, this whole mass of information, it feels like you're drinking from a fire hydrant. You know, you, and how do you condense it? How do you get time to go through it? So it's just, okay, I'm going to stick to the facts. I'm going to just vomit them out. Mm. And therefore, that will be the sales pitch. But as you say, there's no authenticity in that. It's, it's, you're not bringing across who Flynn is or who David is. Mm. I, I'm not sure it can work. Um, it can work. You know, why would you I, I was, I'm a big Buffett fan, even though I'm sold out of Berkshire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still a very big, I love his philosophy. And I used to go often, many times I went through to uh, Omaha. Um, we, now, we now have the webinars, and it was a great experience yeah. when he was at his best. And he was asked the question, and he said, just focus on the companies you know. Just, you know, there's, there's 500 companies in the S&P 500. Just look at the companies you know and like, and start there. You don't have to go through full 500. And, but you don't think that the clients are also getting the same information and saying, you know, David, I, I saw this company um, and it's, say, 150 I, down the S&P. What, what's the response to that? I don't know. it. I don't okay. know. But I'll have a look at it. Let me see if I like it. And, and that's the problem, is that we try to cover too much. Yeah. Um, what happens so many times is we focus on businesses that we're never going to invest in. Yeah. <laughs> we spend so much time... On, on a company that we're not going to invest in. Yeah. And I always say, leave it alone. There's trouble there. Because we have to justify why we're not going to yeah, invest what? in it. I don't, I don't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Why, why, why are we spending so much time on a business that we're not going to invest in? It's, it's got troubles. It's got heavy debt. 
you know what I mean? The prices in which it's dealing, the, you know, are, are falling. Um, it's in a, leave it alone. Buy, well, focus on something else you like. I mean, yeah. a manager used to always say to me, I used to ask him, how do you get through all the research papers and why, which ones do you listen mm -hmm. to or not? He said, no, I've formulated my opinion already. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading them to justify why I'm not buying in that. Could be. Yeah. yeah. But you only but need to read the first paragraph. What do I do? I go through every result that comes out on the JSC. Everyone. Yeah. Well, I go through it. And what do I do? I go straight to the outlook statement. That's the first thing. I look for the outlook statement. I see what they've said. You know, because I know the business yeah. is by it. And I look and see what they've said. And from there, I work backwards and to say, okay, oh, you know, that's interesting. And, and you look at, I look at the segmental analysis. And that's all. I look at two or three little charts there, etc., and you form your opinion from that. If you're going to go through, you know, today accounting is, is, is almost impossible yeah. to read. You know, it's, it's impossible. It's it can take honest. forever, yeah. you know. Yeah, so um, uh, you learn what to look at. And so, this is interesting. I made a turn around. The one thing, that's why I said to you experience, because all the time you're reading that, there's a little dot or a little bit of data in your head that you can draw on somewhere down the line, you know. And somewhere down the line, you'll connect those dots and say, oh, it's time for me to buy it or time for me to sell it or whatever it is. You know, so that's, that's instinct. Yeah. And so no, I, think in, I think there's more of science. There's science to instinct. You know, it's not just instinct. It's information that you've been gathering year after year, reading and reading, you know. And yeah, that's, I think that's mm. true. I know we're running out of time, so okay. I just want to thank you very much for your insights. Uh, there's so much more I would have loved to unpack <laughs> here. You know, the whole fee compression debate, that's for me is mm -hmm. the next big thing on my list mm -hmm. to discuss. Um, you know, this building a business, uh, all these things, that these challenges that we face in this post-COVID, you mm -hmm. know, there, there's so much going on at the moment. And as you mentioned, I guess the big takeaway from me is keep it simple. Exactly. Just keep mm -hmm. it simple mm -hmm. and do what you're good at mm -hmm. and keep it going that mm -hmm. way. But I want to thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time and Pleasure. joining me today. Yeah, lovely to have you here. Good luck. Thank you.